Hey you guys, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. As you already know, I release a new video every Wednesday, but with how disappointing I found last Wednesday's video, I wanted to give you guys a second video this week. This is the big progress video that everyone wanted to see. Cause I'm a bad mother Oh yeah. So it's always an adventure, and here's how we got to this point. I wanted to hurry progress along on the ATVW, and while the existing engine in there is a mess, I feel it is possible to rebuild, but that just wasn't going to work on my budget nor my time frame. Move your ass! I promised you guys to see this go from a pile of assorted random junk. What is that? What the fuck is that? To uh, a pile of junk assembled randomly. What the fuck? Is this piece of shit? Yeah, that's about it. And of course, I did promise that it wouldn't take that long to get it running and riding from the time that I started. But a lot of people suggested after my last video that it would be a lot easier and faster to rebuild this engine rather than swapping the engine out. But for those of you that know, there's nothing easier than swapping a Volkswagen engine. Damn right. Seriously, only a couple or three hours from start to finish on both vehicles and it's done. No fussing, no fighting, no opening up the proverbial can of worms and waiting another month for ordered parts. Yeah, I'm not waiting anymore. So I had to get some stuff moved around the yard to make this work, including the ATVW. But it had four flat tires. As in my experience with slicks, they don't like to maintain air pressure for that long, and I had to air them up. The Blue 72 Super Beetle has a new owner, and man, that was quick. Only since Wednesday did I talk about moving the thing out of here, and I began to shoot this video on late Wednesday. But the deal on the Super Beetle is minus the engine. It's going to Rob, the man with the Jeeps that I featured in previous videos. So it will stay in the family, and you'll be seeing more of him and his son in the future working on this build, and possibly even on their own YouTube channel in the future. They plan to build this into a punked out Volks rod, and the fact that it's in this state of neglect and that it's a Super Beetle, it's the perfect candidate. Well, I had to pull the Super Beetle out by hand, or well, uh, this is why the Duckman is so incredibly popular. I'm just saying. But I bet you know that I wish I hadn't taken apart that running tractor to build the mo kart, right? <laughs> And of course I got it out about halfway, yep, and then it started to rain, as always. But when I got the thing in a straight enough position, I just pulled it out the rest of the way with the Honda. Problem solved, the Beetle is free. So I waited out the rain and started again later. You might have even thought that I've done this before. Well, I really can't wait to have a concrete shop floor to work on. That's for damn sure. Speaking of which, if you wish to support me and my shop endeavors, which, by the way, the shop could be getting built in as little as four months from now. Yes, four months from now is my target. Please hit up my website at duckshit.net and look at the shop donations link and throw me a bone, or two, or three. I said, I ain't giving you no tree fitty, you goddamn Loch Ness monster. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much in advance. Well, the more I gather, the better the facility I can build and the better videos I can make for you guys. I love what I do here, so this really means a lot to me. And it will be reflected in the quality and frequency of my content in the future. So, out with the old and in with the, uh, not so old. This technology is ancient. Well, it's funny just how tricky it is aligning the engine mount bolts and the input shaft even though everything is exposed where you can see it. And that's what makes this vehicle so unique. Everything is just out in the open. But that's when I had a brainstorm. When everything is aligned, instead of trying to push the engine that would rather stay stationary, why don't I just push the ATVW directly into the engine instead? Well, that seemed to work well. I installed the starter bolt first. It has a D-shaped head on it, so it locks against the starter on one end, so you only need one tool on the opposite end. With that bolt in place, I could move away the engine lift and install the rest of the mounting hardware. So I went to get the battery cables connected and I used a brand new super long positive wire. This is one of the components that I waited so long for to be shipped from China. Sheesh, 
I wish it were a little bit of a thicker gauge though, but it should be okay for this project. I, why does he have to have a small d I tried to get this thing to crank, but nothing. I discovered I had a bad ground wire that sparks shot out the side of the crimped connector. Despite it looking okay on the outside, it was probably older and had more corrosion inside of it than Keith Richards. <laughs> so I replaced it with another one in better shape. This one's a little long, but it'll get the job done. I double checked the oil one more time, and while it's halfway between the lines, it looks like oil and not water, so it should be a safe spot to start with. I removed some of the tins that were aggravating me, and that won't be necessary for this build. I set up a makeshift oil indicator from a test light to ensure that I was getting proper oil pressure before I even attempted to start this engine. All right, hopefully that light will go out. There it is, we got oil pressure. Should come back on. Sometimes it takes a couple seconds. There it is. Okay, we got oil pressure, great news. Then I powered up the coil and gave the engine a little juice. The gas in this can was a little heavy on two-stroke oil, so it'll probably smoke a little bit, but let's see what happens. And so far, so good. Now let's see what happens if I give it a fuel supply. I've got some good gas in a tank from the Mocart, and it just happens to have a long enough fuel line attached to it with a nice 90 degree angle at the end. Still a lot of fuel left, but I think we're done for today.